Long Time Affair. Long Time Affair appears set to last for long time to come. Dear Abby, I'm married. He's married. We're in love and have been for eight years. We've tried breaking it off several times over the years, but a force bigger than both of us keeps bringing us back together. I never believed in soulmates or true love until we met. Our love is deep and unconditional. Our roots are intertwined. It's a shame that it happened late in life, but it happened nonetheless. He always treats me like a queen. Neither of us is leaving our spouses or family. We are both in our 50s and sometimes act like we're in our 20s. It's magical. Is it wrong? Do we go on until something changes? Do we try for the hundredth time to break away? An affair, no matter how you slice it, will never be accepted in the eyes of traditional society. So it will be perceived as unacceptable. What's your opinion? Signed, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered in New York. Hello, welcome to the mini story for the long time affair lesson. Let's get started. First, the mini story. There is a very small man named Jim. Jim is only one foot tall. Even though Jim is 48 years old, people always perceive him as a child. In the eyes of the public, Jim is a cute little boy. Jim hates this. He says, I want people to accept me as I really am. I want them to give me unconditional respect. I don't want people to go on treating me like a child. So, Jim goes to the gym and exercises every day. He becomes very strong. He also learns kickboxing. One day, a tall man sees him, laughs, and says, You're such a cute little man! <laughs> Jim gets angry. He yells, and he kicks the man. They start fighting. The fight lasts for 20 hours. The men's heads and legs and arms become intertwined. They fall down. Jim finally breaks away from the man. Then he jumps up, kicks him in the head, and the man falls down. Jim wins the fight and yells, No matter how you slice it, I just kicked your ass. All right, back to the beginning, this time with questions. Here we go. There is a very small na man named Jim. Is there a small woman named Jim? No, there's not a small woman named Jim. There's a small man named Jim. Jim is only one foot tall. How old is Jim? Well, Jim is 48 years old. Even though he's 48 years old, people always perceive him as a child. Is Jim a child? No, he's not a child. People perceive him as a child. They see him as a child. They see him and they think, oh, he's a cute little child. But he's not really a child. Is Jim a child or a man? Well, Jim is a man. Do people perceive him as a child or a man? Well, people perceive him as a child. Who do people perceive as a child? Well, people perceive Jim as a child. Do people perceive Jim as a big, strong man? No, they don't perceive him as a big, strong man. They don't see him as a big, strong man. They perceive him as a child. In the eyes of the public, Jim is a cute little boy. In the eyes of the public, is Jim a strong man? No, in the eyes of the public, in the public's opinion, in most people's opinion, Jim is a cute little boy. In the eyes of the public, is George Bush a cute little boy? No, no, in the eyes of the public, George Bush is not a cute little boy. In the eyes of the public, Jim 
is a cute little boy. In the eyes of his father, is Jim a cute little boy? No, no, his father doesn't think he's a little boy now. His father knows he's a man, a good, strong man. In the eyes of his father, Jim is a real man. But in the eyes of the public, Jim is a cute little boy. All right. Jim hates this. He hates people's perception. He hates what people think about him. He says, I want people to accept me as I really am. I want them to give me unconditional respect. Does Jim want total respect from everybody? Yes, that's right. He wants unconditional respect from everybody. Does Jim want unconditional love from everybody? No, Jim doesn't want unconditional love. He doesn't want them to totally love him always. He wants unconditional respect. He wants people to always respect him in all situations, all the time. He wants unconditional respect. Who wants unconditional respect? Well, Jim wants unconditional respect. Why does he want unconditional respect? Well, he wants unconditional respect because people perceive him as a child. He doesn't like this. He wants unconditional respect. He doesn't want people to go on treating him like a child. He says, I don't want people to go on treating me like a child. Does he want people to continue to see him as a child? No, he doesn't want people to go on seeing him as a child. Does he want people to go on seeing him as a little weak person? No, he does not want people to continue doing that. He does not want people to go on doing that. Does he want people to go on treating him, seeing him like a big, strong person? Well, he, he does want that, but people don't do that, so they can't go on doing that, right? It's not, it can't continue because it's not happening already. It's not possible. They, they can't go on doing something if they aren't already doing it. To go on means to continue doing something that is already happening. So he says, I don't want people to go on treating me like a child, treating him like a child. Do they treat him like an adult? No, they do not treat him like an adult. Do they treat him like a serious person? No, they don't treat him like a serious person. How do people treat Jim? Well, people treat Jim like a child. They pretend he's a child, right? They behave as if he was a child. They treat him like a child. Do they treat him badly in a very cruel, mean, bad way? Well, no, they don't really treat him badly. They just treat him like a child. They don't respect him. They treat him like a child. And so Jim gets upset. He goes to the gym to work out every day. He exercises every day. He becomes very, very strong. He also learns kickboxing. One day, a tall man sees him and laughs and says, Ha ha ha, you're such a cute little man. Jim gets very angry. He yells and he kicks the man. They start fighting. The fight lasts for 20 hours. Does the fight last for 15 hours? No, it does not last for 15 hours. Does the fight last for 10 hours? No, the fight does not last for 10 hours, does not last for 15 hours. How long does the fight last? Well, the fight lasts, the fight continues for 20 hours. How long is the fight? Well, the fight is 20 hours long. The fight lasts for 20 hours. What lasts for 20 hours? Well, the fight lasts for 20 hours. The men's hands and legs become intertwined during the fight, 
and they fall down? Do their hands and legs become wrapped around each other, connected to each other? Yes, that's right. Their hands and legs become intertwined. They are wrapped around each other, stuck together. They become intertwined. Do their fingers become intertwined? No, no, not their fingers. Their fingers do not become intertwined, do not become wrapped around each other. Do their ears become intertwined? No, no, maybe that's not possible, right? Their ears do not become intertwined. Do their hands and legs become intertwined? Yes, that's right. Their hands and their legs wrap around each other. Their hands and legs become intertwined. Do their necks become intertwined? Actually, yes, their necks wrap around each other. Their heads and necks stick together also. They all become intertwined. Their hands, their legs, their necks and head, they wrap around each other. They're stuck together and they fall down. But finally, Jim breaks away from the big man. Does Jim get free from the big man? Yeah, that's right. He gets free. He breaks away from the man. Are Jim's hands and legs still intertwined? No, they're not. He breaks free, right? They're not connected anymore. They're not wrapped around each other anymore. He breaks free. Jim breaks free from the other man. Does Jim break free from a woman? No, no. He breaks free from the other man. After Jim breaks free, what does he do? Well, after Jim breaks free, he jumps up and kicks the man in the head. Boom! The man falls down unconscious. Ugh. Jim wins the fight, and he yells, No matter how you slice it, I just kicked your ass. All right, no matter how you slice it means no matter what your opinion, no matter how you look at it, any angle, any way you look at it, any opinion, everybody will agree, Jim kicked his ass. And of course, kicked your ass means to beat somebody, to win against them. Okay, so no matter how you slice it, did Jim lose? No, no matter how you slice it, any opinion will agree, Jim won the fight. No matter how you slice it, is George Bush an idiot? Yes, that's right. Everybody agrees that George Bush is an idiot, no matter how you slice it. Any way you look at it, any opinion, everybody agrees George Bush is an idiot. No matter how you slice it, is Jim a strong man? Yeah, that's right. I think so. No matter how you slice it, Jim is a strong guy. He's a tough guy. Everybody agrees now. No matter how you slice it, Jim is a strong guy. Did Jim kick the man's ass? Yes, he did. Jim kicked his ass. Whose ass did Jim kick? Well, Jim kicked the big man's ass. The big man from the gym, right? He kicked his ass. Does everybody agree that Jim kicked his ass? Yeah, everybody agrees. No matter how you slice it, Jim won the fight. Jim kicked his ass. All right, very good. Let's go on back to the top again. This time I will pause after the key words or phrases. Please copy my pronunciation. This is not a grammar exercise. This is a pronunciation exercise. So please focus on pronunciation. Here we go. There's a very small man named Jim. Jim is only one foot tall. Even though Jim is 48 years old, people always perceive him as a child. People always perceive him as a child. In the eyes of the public, Jim is just a cute little boy. 
In the eyes of the public, Jim is just a cute little boy. Jim hates this. He says, I want people to accept me as I really am. I want them to give me unconditional respect. I want them to give me unconditional respect. He says, I don't want people to go on treating me like a child. I don't want people to go on treating me like a child. So, Jim goes to the gym and exercises every day. He becomes very strong. He also learns kickboxing. One day, a tall, big man sees him and laughs and says, You're such a cute little man. <laughs> Jim gets angry. He yells and says, I'm going to kick your ass. He kicks the man. They start fighting. The fight lasts for 20 hours. The fight lasts for 20 hours. The men's hands and legs become intertwined. The men's hands and legs become intertwined. They fall down. Jim finally breaks away from the man. Jim finally breaks away from the man. Then he jumps up and kicks the man in the head. Jim wins the fight and he yells, No matter how you slice it, I just kicked your ass. No matter how you slice it, I just kicked your ass. All right, very good. Please pause now. Try to tell all of the story yourself. Tell everything yourself. If you can't remember, relax, go back, listen again. All right, now for the POV point of view stories. Next. Okay, welcome to the POV mini stories, point of view mini stories for the long time affair lesson. Same story, different versions. Let's start. First, we go to the past. Ten years ago. Ten years ago, there was a very small man named Jim. Jim was only one foot tall. Even though Jim was 48 years old, people always perceived him as a child. In the eyes of the public, Jim was just a cute little boy. Jim hated this. He said, I want people to accept me as I really am. I want them to give me unconditional respect. I don't want people to go on treating me like a child. So, Jim went to the gym and exercised every day. He became very strong. He also learned kickboxing. One day, a tall man saw him, laughed, and said, You're such a cute little man. <laughs> Jim got angry. He yelled and said, I'm going to kick your ass. He kicked the man. They started to fight. The fight lasted for 20 hours. The men's hands and legs became intertwined, and they fell down. Jim finally broke free from the man. Then he jumped up and kicked the man in the head. Jim won the fight, and he yelled, No matter how you slice it, I just kicked your ass. All right, that's our past version. Now let's move to the perfect version, we call it, I guess. Here we go. Since last year. Since last year. Okay. There's a very small man named Jim. Jim is only one foot tall. Even though Jim is 48 years old, people have always perceived him as a child. In the eyes of the public, Jim has always been just a cute little boy. Jim has always hated this, but since last year, he has become very upset. Every day he has said, I want people to accept me as I really am. 
I want them to give me unconditional respect. I don't want people to go on treating me as a child. And so, since last year, Jim has gone to the gym and has exercised every day. He has become very strong. He has also learned kickboxing. Well, one day, a tall big man saw him and laughed and said, You're such a cute little man. Jim got angry. He yelled and he kicked the man. They started to fight. The fight lasted for 20 hours. The men's hands and legs became intertwined and they fell down. Jim finally broke away from the man. Then he jumped up and kicked him in the head. Jim won the fight and he yelled, No matter how you slice it, I just kicked your ass. All right, in that version, you notice that uh, we use the, we call it the present perfect. It doesn't matter. You don't need to know the name of the grammar. But we use that form, that have gone, have been form, because it's something that has continued through the past for a while, started in the past, kept going for a while. Uh, for example, uh, people have always perceived him as a child. That's been happening for a long time, starting when he was young until now. People continue to perceive him, have continued to perceive him as a child. Right? It, hap it started in the past, and it kept going for a while. And then again, we talked about uh, going to the gym. For, since last year, Jim has gone to the gym. He has exercised every day, right? starting last year up until now. And then finally, we changed to the past tense because we're talking about one specific event, the fight. Right? That happened in the past. It's over. It was just a short event in the past. Started, finished in the past. It's done. It's not a long time period. It's a very short and complete. So we use the simple past for that. It's all you need to know about grammar. Don't think too much about the grammar. All right, on to version number three, Into the Future. Okay, this is, we can imagine this is my idea for a movie, and I'm telling you the story. What I think should happen, what I think will happen in this movie. Here's my movie idea in the future. Ten years from now. Ten years from now, there will be a very small man named Jim. Jim will only be one foot tall. Even though he'll only be 48 years old, people will think he's a child. People will perceive him as a child. In the eyes of the public, Jim will be a cute little boy only. Jim will hate this. He's going to say, I want people to accept me as I really am. I want them to give me unconditional respect. I don't want people to go on treating me like a child. Jim will go to the gym and exercise every day. He'll become very strong. He'll also learn kickboxing. One day, a tall man's going to challenge him and laugh and say, You're such a cute little man. <laughs> Jim will get angry. He'll yell and he'll kick the man. They'll start fighting. The fight is going to last 20 hours. The men's hands and legs will become intertwined and they'll fall down. Jim will finally break away from the man and then he'll jump up and kick him in the head. Jim will win the fight and he'll yell, No matter how you slice it, I just kicked your ass. Okay, the, sim the future is fairly simple. It's pretty easy. Uh, you guys have learned going to and will. However, in normal speech, we do not say going to and will. We change the pronunciation. We say ol instead of will. We say ol. Jimol. Jimol. The manol. The manol challenge him. Jimol fight him. We don't say Jim will. We say Jimol. Jimol. We just add the ol sound to the subject. And the other thing we do, instead of going to, we say gonna. Jim's gonna get angry. Not Jim is going to get angry. Jim's gonna. Jim's, z, 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 you need the z sound there. Jim's gonna equals Jim is going to. Jim's gonna. All right, and that's how we actually use the future in normal speech. So when you hear gonna, when you hear all, that means the future. Okay, please go back, listen to each section, pause, 
and try to tell that version yourself. Try to tell the story using the past, 10 years ago. Try it again with since last year. And then try it again in the future. If you have trouble, if it's difficult, relax. This takes time. Just relax, go back, listen again. Go back, listen again. Listen, listen, listen very carefully. Hear how the verbs change. Hear how the vocabulary changes sometimes. Listen carefully. That's the most important part. Don't get upset if you can't tell the story yourself. It's okay. That will take time. Listening is the most important part. All right, I will see you next time. Go on and listen to the commentary. Bye-bye. Welcome to the vocabulary lesson for Long Time Affair. Let's get started right away. Okay, the letter begins with the uh, headline, Long Time Affair appears set to last for long time to come. All right, an affair means, it has a couple meanings. In this case, affair means a relationship outside of marriage. It means sex outside of marriage. So it means you are married, but you have sex with another person. Or it, it sometimes can mean even if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and then you have sex with another person. We call that an affair. It's a noun, an affair. So this letter is from a woman, and she's having an affair. She's having sex with another guy, not her husband. Okay, and it's been, it's, and it says set to last. Set means uh, prepared or ready, ready to last, for a long time. It means it's going to continue for a long time. To last, to last, using a to last as a verb. Now, you know the word last, you know, first, second, third, and then last. But here we're using it as a verb, to last. And to last means to continue. And it gives the idea of how much time does something continue. If you say, the movie lasted, past tense, the movie lasted two hours, it means the movie was two hours long. The movie continued for two hours. It lasted. So to last, to last as a verb means uh, time period, how long something continues, to continue for some time, to last. Okay, and then she says, I'm married. He's married. We're in love and have been for eight years. We've tried breaking it off several times. To break something off means to stop doing it. Or it means to get away from something, to escape from something. So if you have an affair, it means you're, you're having sex with another person. And if you try to break off the affair, break it off means to finish it, stop doing it, uh, escape from it, get away from it. Right? So to break it off, to break something off. Of course, there's a direct meaning. It can mean you really do break something. But in this case... B to break off means to stop doing something, to not continue doing it. And it can also mean to escape from, get away from. Okay, so break off, to break off something, to break it off. Okay, she says, but a force bigger than both of us keeps bringing us back together. A force means some power, a power. Maybe, I don't know what she's talking about, but some kind of natural feeling, some strong power inside them, or maybe outside them, maybe God or something, but whatever. Some big power keeps bringing them together again. They try to stop, but then they get back together again and again. Okay, she says, before this, she never believed in soulmates or true love. A soulmate, it's a noun, a soulmate is your perfect partner. It's the perfect match for you in the world, in the universe, right? So if you say, she is my soulmate, it means she is my perfect match. She's the perfect person for me. It's more than just love. It's more than just a girlfriend or boyfriend. It's more even more than just husband or wife. It's the idea that it's your life partner, someone with a very, very deep connection. So this man is her soulmate. Okay. She said, our love is deep and unconditional. Unconditional, unconditional. Unconditional means without conditions. Without conditions. A condition is a rule 
or a circumstance or a situation. Okay, that's a condition. So without conditions means without rules. So what does that mean? Unconditional love. We use this phrase a lot, unconditional love. Unconditional love means love without rules. It means you love somebody in any situation. It doesn't matter what happens. You will always love them. Nothing can change it. Unconditional love. If they kill your brother, you will still love them. If they steal your money, you will still love them. If they hit you in the face and kick you in the stomach, you will still love them. That is unconditional love. It means in any condition, in any situation, anything happens, it doesn't matter, you will still love them. That is unconditional love, unconditional love. So she's saying with this man, she has unconditional love. Nothing can change it. Even something bad happens. Even though they have some problems, they still love each other the same. She says, our roots are intertwined. First, the word intertwined, intertwined. Inter means between, okay? And twined means tied together. So tied together in between. It means wrapped around each other. So you can imagine if, you, if I take some string and then I take another piece of string and I, I wrap them together, I tie them together many, many, many times. We say that is intertwined. The two strings are intertwined. They're wrapped together many times. Roots, you can imagine roots, the roots of a plant, the roots of a tree. The roots grow down, and then they another tree is next to it, and those roots also grow down. And then they mix together, right? The roots of each tree mix together, and they go around each other, and then they become connected. We say those roots are intertwined. They're wrapped around each other, they go around each other, and they're connected very strongly. So what does she mean? Our roots are intertwined. Well, I don't know exactly, but I think she means roots. She means their deep, deep emotions, their deep thoughts, their deep feelings are connected very strongly. They're, they're around each other. They're connected. They're intertwined. So their roots are intertwined. Their deep feelings are intertwined. She says, it's a shame that it happened late in life. It's a shame means it's too bad. It's a shame means it's a bad situation or it's unfortunate. It's really the best, probably the best meaning. It's unfortunate. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. Some people say it's a pity. It's a pity. I hear a lot of students say it's a pity. But in fact, it's a pity is not so common in normal speech. In fact, Tomoe says it's a pity all the time. It's kind of cute. Uh, but what we really say is it's a shame. It's a more common phrase. It's a shame. So it's too bad. It's unfortunate. It's a shame it happened late in life. So she's saying, oh, I wish I met him when I was younger. It's a shame that we met later in life. But it's okay. She says, he always treats me like a queen. Treats me. Treats me. He always treats me like a queen. Treats me means, or treat someone. To treat someone means that's how you behave. It's how you act towards them. So if, I, if you say, he treats me like a queen, it means he's very, very nice to me, to her, right? He's very, very nice to her. He imagines, he pretends that she is this great queen, this wonderful person. He serves her. He's always so kind to her. He treats her like a queen. Now, we have another phrase in English which is, he treats me like a dog. He treats me like a dog. Well, that's the opposite meaning. It means he is very cruel, very mean, very bad, not respectful, not kind. He treats me like a dog. It means he yells at you and gives you bad food and is very unkind, not kind. All right, so treats me, treats me. It's how you act, how you behave towards another person, with another person. All right, and then she says, neither of us is leaving our spouses or family. They're not going to leave their spouses. A spouse is a husband or a wife. So husband is a man, wife is a woman, but a spouse is a man or a woman. doesn't matter. It means husband or wife. So they're not going to leave their husbands or wives. They're not going to leave them. But she says, but she's going to continue seeing this man 
Let's continue with the affair because it's magical. They love each other unconditionally. And finally, in the last paragraph, she asks Abby, Is it wrong? Do we go on until something changes? To go on means to continue, to keep doing what you're doing. Should they go on with the affair? Should they continue the affair? Should they keep doing it? So to go on, to go on. To go on means to continue. To go on means keep going, keep, keep doing it. Go on. She says, or should we try again to break away? Here we have break away again, S uh, similar to break it off. Break away means escape. It definitely it means get away, to escape, to leave some situation, to break away from a situation. So to break away is to leave a situation, to get away from a situation. Okay, and finally she says, an affair, no matter how you slice it, will never be accepted. No matter how you slice it, this is a slang phrase in American English. No matter how you slice it means in any situation. It means however you look at the situation. Even if you're, if you're a man or a woman, if you're rich or poor, it doesn't matter. Everybody will agree with the same opinion. So no matter how you slice it, it means no matter how you look at it, no matter who you are, it doesn't matter. Everybody agrees an affair is not acceptable. So no matter how you slice it, no matter how you slice it, the affair will never be accepted. So she says, an affair, no matter how you slice it, means any opinion, doesn't matter, everybody agrees. An affair, no matter how you slice it, will never be accepted in the eyes of traditional society. Ah, so now she's saying, who? Who can't accept it? In the eyes of means in the opinion of. In the opinion of. So in the eyes of traditional society. So traditional society cannot accept it. In the eyes of, in their opinion, traditional society cannot accept it. So maybe in the eyes of other people, someone else, maybe it's okay. right? In their eyes, in the eyes of this woman, the affair is okay. But in the eyes of traditional society, old society, the affair is not okay. So in the eyes of means in the opinion of. Whose opinion? She says, finally, it will be perceived as unacceptable. Perceived, to perceive, means to see something. But it really has a deeper meaning than just seeing. It, what it really means is how you judge what you see. So for example, I'll give you an example. A man runs out of a building. He runs out of the building and he's screaming, Ah! Okay, everybody sees the man. Everybody hears the man screaming. But everyone will have a different opinion about what is happening. Right? One person says, oh, he's angry. This man is very, very angry. But you ask another person, they say, oh, no, he's not angry. He's afraid. This man is very afraid. You ask a third person, and the third person says, oh, no, 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 he's hurt. This man is hurt. He feels pain. Something's wrong, right? It's the same situation. Everybody sees the same thing, and they hear the same thing, but they perceive something different. So perceive is really what you see plus what you think. That's what perceive means. What you see or hear or feel plus what you think. Those two together, is that means perceive, to perceive as a verb. So she's saying people will perceive the affair as unacceptable. They will see it and they will think, they will decide it's not good. It doesn't, now is it really unacceptable? Is it really bad? Well, I don't know. We don't know, right? Then we would use the verb is. We say the affair is unacceptable means it's, it's a totally correct. Everybody agrees it's unacceptable. But if we use the verb perceive, it means that's what people think. That's their opinion, but it might be wrong. So perceive. Perceive has the idea of opinion. It's what you see and hear plus your opinion. All right, and finally she signs it, bewitched, bothered, and bewildered 
in New York. Bewitched is like、uh, magic, right? You see the word witch in that word. It means a, a, a witch has put a spell on you. It means you're under the effect of magic. So she, she's saying that she feels some kind of magical feeling. She's bewitched because of this great man. Bothered. Bothered means upset. We've had bothered before. Bothered means、uh, upset or annoyed. Upset or annoyed. Bothered. So she also feels a little bit annoyed and bothered because it's a difficult situation. And finally, bewildered. Bewildered means confused. Confused. So this woman feels bothered. She's a little、uh, annoyed and upset. But she's also bewildered. She's confused. She doesn't know what should she do. Bewildered. Bewildered. All right, that is the end of this lesson, the vocabulary lesson. Listen to it a few times and then move on to the mini story. Bye bye. Hello, welcome to the commentary for Long Time Affair. This is an interesting letter, I think. So it's talking about basically、uh, two people, they're married. So there's a, a woman and she's married to somebody, a man, obviously. And then there's a, a guy and he's also married. But these two people are having an affair with each other. And an affair is a relationship outside of a marriage. So if you have a girlfriend who's not your wife, that relationship is called an affair. You know, or same with a, a woman or a man. So they're having an affair, it's been happening for a while. So, it's not a short thing, it's a long term thing. And、uh, they love each other very, very deeply.、Uh, unconditional love, they describe it. Our roots are intertwined, so their, their deep feelings are intertwined together.、Um, but, but they're in their 50s, so they're older, and they don't want to leave their families. Maybe they have children, probably adult children, and they don't want to destroy their families. So, this is kind of an interesting situation. And、uh, I use this in my class here in San Francisco. There was a very interesting discussion about this article. And I think there, there were a lot of different opinions, actually. I was a little surprised.、Uh, so, some people thought, you know, oh, this, it's, it's terrible. They must end the affair. And they're doing a very, very bad thing. And that was kind of, the, I would say that's, that would be the normal American reaction, the normal American opinion. However, most of the students did not have that opinion. And most of my students are Asian, Japanese, and Korean, and Thai. And most of them actually had very different ideas.、Um, I would say about half of them said they should continue doing what they're doing, but continue to be secret. So they said, continue the affair because they love each other very much, but they also love their families and don't want to hurt their families. So they said, these students said, just continue doing what you are doing, but you know, keep it a secret so you don't hurt your families. So, so just continue going. And they thought that this is not so terrible because these people love each other very, very much, and it's not horrible. They're not bad people. So that was another opinion. And then a, a, a final opinion was that they should get a divorce. Each of them should divorce their families, their, their spouses, and they should marry each other. So they should stop this affair because they obviously love each other so much. Maybe they don't have the same feeling for their wife or husband. They should get divorced, each of them, and then marry each other. And that was the third opinion. And those two opinions, those last two, continue or get divorced, were definitely the most popular opinions in my class. A little surprising to me. And it showed me something、uh, that, you know, this idea is very cultural. The idea of having affairs and the idea of what is good or bad in marriage has differences in different cultures. Not that anybody thinks, you know, encourages affairs. Nobody was saying, oh, affairs are good. Every husband and wife should have an affair. Nobody said that. But there were different attitudes about how, is it terrible a little bit? Is it terrible, really, really horrible, bad?、Uh, is it not so bad? And that was very different. Each individual had different opinions about that. And、uh, di I could see different 
cultural ideas about that too. A little bit later, maybe a couple weeks later, I was in the bookstore here in San Francisco, down at Union Square, downtown, and I uh, saw a book about this subject, this exact subject, the cultural ideas, cultural opinions about having affairs in marriage. And I, I didn't read the whole book. I, w I didn't want to buy it. I just kind of skimmed it. I read it quickly. I read the summary, and I skimmed through it quickly. But it had the ba basic idea that, that it's true, that every country has a different rules, different opinions about affairs, whether they are really, really bad or a little bad or if they're okay as long as they're secret. Or th There are many different opinions. It talked about how in uh, Japan... There are different opinions that it's not horrible, but that uh, it can be common among some men and how other places, you know, they have the idea if the man pays for sex with a prostitute, then it's not cheating. It's not an affair because there's no emotional involvement. And so some cultures think, oh, that's not so bad. And other cultures think, oh, it's, it's pretty normal for uh, couples to have an affair with somebody else, but they should be very uh, not kind of secretive about it. They shouldn't let everybody know, and it's not terrible. And then it talked about in this book how America actually is quite different from much of the world, because in America, the opinions are very strong that affairs are horrible, terrible, almost evil. And this is stronger than in most places in the world, that, you know, Many people have this idea, but in America, this idea is very, very, very strong, stronger than in other countries. So that was interesting uh, to me because when I chose this letter for my class, I thought everybody would agree, oh, this is bad. They should end it immediately. They're really bad people because I'm thinking like an American. I'm thinking that's what most Americans would say. But in fact, it, it's not what most of my students said, not at all. In fact, I think maybe only one student said something like that. And all the other ones were less judgmental, less strong about it. So interesting, very interesting. It shows again how uh, I, culture can influence our ideas about this quite a bit, about many things. Very, very basic things, such as relationships, are affected by culture. And often it's in a subtle way. It's not obvious sometimes. It's a little more deep, those, those differences. But those differences are there. And... You know, learning to communicate effectively uh, is important so we can understand those differences. And I, I don't think in these kind of cases, these kinds of situations, there's no right or wrong answer, right? God didn't write something down and we all must follow it. Uh, I think that you know, every culture has reasons for their beliefs and there are good and bad points to those cultural beliefs. And, you know, I, I, I'm very much like this idea of not holding on to opinions too strongly because, you know, we never really know. We can't ever really be sure about things. So it's, it's always good to remember, even if we have a strong opinion, it's good to remember that it's just an opinion. And maybe it's good for us, but maybe other people in other situations, in other cultures, in other places, with other circumstances, maybe our opinion is not good for them. And it's always good to remember that. I try to remember that. I have strong opinions about things, certainly about education and teaching and about many things. And sometimes they're too strong. And I have to remind myself, you know, AJ, it's just an opinion. It's not right. <laughs> it's not 100% correct. Some God in heaven did not give you this opinion. It's just your opinion. It's good for me. It's good for my experiences. But in the end, finally, it's only an opinion. And it's not good for everybody. All right. Another issue about this letter, this long-time affair situation, is the issue of a double standard. And this is something we also talked about in my class and something that I feel very strongly about. What's a double standard? We've had that phrase before. A double standard is a rule that is different for different people. For example, a rule that is different for women 
than it is for men. And we see this double standard everywhere in the world about having affairs. I'm sure you know, and I'm sure you will agree, that in most countries, if a man has an affair, it's less serious than if a woman has an affair, right? So a man is married, and he has sex with another woman. Maybe he pays a prostitute. Maybe he has a girlfriend. And, you know, in different countries, we might think different things about this, but we might think this is bad. But in most countries, I, and I, I, I want to say all countries, <laughs> almost all countries, most people will still have a little bit of an attitude, oh, that's normal for men. It's not so terrible. He's a man. But if we change the situation, we have a woman, a wife, she's married, she has an affair, she pays a man to have sex, or she has a boyfriend. In most cultures, almost all, we will judge the woman much worse. She's terrible. She's a prostitute. She's a slut. She's horrible. Right? It's much worse, much more negative for the woman than for the man. And that is a double standard. I think it's wrong. I think it's 100% wrong that, you know, the woman, if she does something, she's terrible, horrible. Everybody criticizes her and says she's a bad person. But if a man does the same thing, oh, it's okay. It's not so bad. It's normal. Oh, or it's a little bad, but it's not terrible. And that is a clear double standard. We see that in almost every country I know of. In my class discussion, everybody agreed in their own country this was a double standard. In Thailand, if a man has an affair, it's less serious than if a woman does. In Japan, same situation. In America, same. I don't know about Europe. My guess is probably same. And that's not good. It shows that, to be honest, women are still not equal. You're getting closer especially in some countries in the United States women are getting much closer to being equal in Europe I'm sure in Japan and in many countries but there's still a lot of work to do there's still so many double standards about women where the woman is treated more badly or she's judged more harshly more severely more she's judged in a more negative way than a man for the exact same situation. And of course, we see this in working too, that uh, you know, women are getting more jobs, they're getting better and better jobs in the United States. But still, if you look at the top, the top of the company, the president, the CEO, the very top officers, they're still mostly men. If you look at the American government, the senators, the Congress people, the uh, president, of course, guess what? Mostly men still. So we still have this double standard. We, it, but in politics, in business, in culture, everywhere. So there's still a lot of work to do. I think it's work that women have to do. But I think men also have to realize this. And they have to understand it. And they need to help change it. Because it's something that affects them as well. You know, if you have a daughter, if you have a girlfriend, do you really want her to be treated badly? Do you really want her to have a double standard? I don't. And I, and I hope you don't either. Uh, so th it's a big issue, this idea of double standard. And I think that we see the double standard issue most strongly about sex, when it comes to sex, sexual relationships. That's where women really get treated badly and they get judged differently and much more negative. A man has sex with many women. Oh, he's cool. A woman has sex with many men. Oh, she's a slut. She's terrible. Same situation. The woman is treated very negatively, very badly. The man is almost admired, almost complimented. That's wrong. It's terrible. And about affairs, as we just discussed, same thing. A man has an affair. Oh, it's not so bad. A woman has an affair. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So th this is a double standard that in the area of sex, even uh, I think we see this a lot with even enjoying sex. Men are taught to enjoy sex. If a man really likes sex a lot, it's great and he's very passionate, then that's seen as wonderful. He's a passionate man. But if a woman 
really enjoys sex and she's very passionate and very direct about it, then she gets criticized a lot. Sometimes she's criticized. And so we see a lot of women who are afraid to enjoy sex or afraid to say they enjoy sex. They're afraid people will criticize them. Another double standard that we see with women, especially in this area of sexual relationships. So anyway, that, those are the two big issues I wanted to talk about. Uh, one being the double standard that we see with women and men in most cultures, most societies. And then the second thing was just the, the, the cultural differences from country to country, region to region, about this idea of having affairs. How bad is it? Well, that depends on where you're from. It probably depends on your age. Many different things. All right. Well, very interesting topic this time. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, please help us out. Go to Delicious, right? Go to Delicious and register. And then please go to EffortlessEnglish.com and .org and tag us. You go to our website and then you click the tag button that you downloaded after you registered. And registering with Delicious is free. And it really helps our club. It helps us a lot. It will help us get new members, recruit new members without spending money for advertising. It helps me keep the price low, low, low so everyone can do it. If necessary, in the future, I will advertise. I will do more Google ads. I will be more aggressive about marketing and trying to get more members because I want more members. It gives more energy to the club, right? More people participating. It's more fun. So I will do that in the future if necessary. I hope it's not necessary because if I have to do that, I will have to raise the price. So please help us out. Go to Delicious, register, and then tag our websites. All right. I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.